January 29th, the seventh day of the week, the day that the Lord proclaims is his Sabbath, the day that he sanctified and made holy. You won't find that, that he did that in any other day. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, a year to keep your eyes on heaven, day 29 of the year 2010. Running away from God. Brethren, I suggest you write this down, uh, chapter and verse, on a pad and paper, so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. We're going to get into Jonah again today, which is a very interesting book if you want to study it in depth. Brother, you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video as we go along so you can study along with us and read along with us to show how we're getting along. Well, with that, let's get right along with running away from God in Jonah chapter 1 verses 3 through 17. Jonah chapter 1 and verse 3 reads, Jonah ran away from the Lord. When God commanded Jonah to travel to Nineveh and warn the people of his wrath, Jonah drew a line in the sand. You know, it's very interesting. I will go to the old biblical maps and find the closest body of water and see where Nineveh is. Now, Nineveh is in northern Iraq. Go and check and see far how far he had to go. Not many people look at that. It was the one thing he refused to do. It was not as if he did not know God's power. Jonah was a prophet, a man who had seen God's glory and God's wrath. He feared the Lord, but he hated the Nevenites more. Nineveh was a key, key city in Assyria, and Jonah was from God a Jew. He had lost count of the number of times Assyria has ravaged his homeland, terrorizing his people. Jonah not only feared the Nivenites, he hated them. And so when God asked him to warn them of his coming judgment, he refused and ran. What is the one thing in your life that you could not imagine God asking you to do? Surely, he would not ask you to give up a career that you would work so hard to develop or a business that you have sweated blood and tears to build. You cannot imagine that he would ask you to do mission work in Africa, not with your aversion to heat and mosquitoes. Do you think he would ever take you away from your family? Or worse yet, take your family away from you? Be careful how you answer, because if we learn anything from the story of Jonah, we learn that God is interested in our devotion, not our comfort. The one thing you must despise may be the very thing that God calls you towards. Not because he enjoys making us miserable, but because he sees the bigger picture. As we read through the story of Jonah, we have to ask ourselves, who received the greatest degree of deliverance, Nineveh or Jonah? While running from God, Jonah hitched a ride with some Gentile sailors. God sent a storm that threatened to capsize the ship. So the sailors began to wonder about their Jewish doorway. What have you done to bring an awful storm down upon us, they demanded. Jonah, chapter 1 and verse 8. When they discovered that Jonah was running away from God, their eyes lit up with fear. Oh, why did you do it, they groaned. Jonah, 
chapter 1 and verse 10. Even Gentiles knew about the Hebrew God, and these guys had no interest in finding themselves on the business end of his wrath. They knew the risk of harboring a fugitive from God of Israel. They fell on their knees and pleaded for mercy, then threw Jonah overboard. Before running from God, ask yourself, how much is my sin going to cost those around me? Because it is usually those near to us that suffer the greatest harm for our mistakes. What is the one thing you most fear God may ask you to do or give up? How do you think you would respond if he did? God will declare him to be his son. That is in Psalms chapter 2 and verse 7. And in verse 6 it reads, Thou art my son, and this day I have begotten thee. Jonah and the whale, and many Bibles says the great fish, in Jonah chapter 1 and verse 2 reads, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men, because the tradition of men will lead you to the Gehenna fire. You'll find that over Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. I know some of you know I repeat that over and over and over again. It needs repeating. Get it in your head. Follow the Lord's commandments. They're not multiple choice. And in James 2.10 it reads, If you break even the least of one, You've broken them all. That means you're a murderer, an adulterer, if you break even the least. Some of you consider the seventh day the least. The seventh day Sabbath. You change it. In many places in the Bible, and I read to you the other day, do not add to nor take away from these that the book has given you. Brethren, do you want to find your way to the kingdom that is coming upon this earth with the Lord, then get down on your knees and repent. Repent of following the tradition of men. Ask the Lord to show you the way, the understanding, the wisdom, the knowledge that He has sent to you in that letter He sent to you that is found in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for this Sabbath. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.